to Morning Coffee and it's time for the lifestyle segment right here this Monday morning. We take a look at how special special effects makeup can be. And of course joining me on set is Jeffrey Ndunga who is a special effects makeup artist. I mean we're going to have fun. I don't know. I, I, sh I would have expected you to come with the makeup so we can try something and see how effective that can be. Good morning. Morning. You're well? Thank you. I'm well. Good to have you. Good to have you too. Mm -hmm. Thank you for having me. Yes, and so how special is special effects makeup? Special effects makeup, it's an amazing world. Mm -hmm. I can say world because yes. uh, only the artist can understand the, the, the word world. Right. We go deep into the creative world to bring that to reality. Mm -hmm. yeah. All right, so when you say that only the artist can understand, <laughs> are you meaning this makeup artist? Because I... I meant to understand that most of the times when you have these special effects is because of uh, probably acting purposes or special purposes. So when you limit to just the artist, what does it mean? I mean, don't you get directions from the people who probably want the end product as opposed to you yourself? Yes, yes. That's why I'm saying mm -hmm. only the make, only the artist can understand. The that artist too. now you're generalizing, yeah. Yes. Okay. Yes. So everybody is an mm -hmm. artist. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I can say that, mm -hmm. but. Uh, we have the different arts yep. in in uh, different uh, categories or mm -hmm. different uh, aspects. Mm -hmm. It's yeah. obviously different from the normal makeup. So yes. how different is it, and how special is it? Uh, we have uh, there is much difference of uh, normal makeup makeup mm -hmm. and uh, special effects because mm -hmm. not every makeup artist can do special effects, right. and not yeah, not every makeup artist can do uh, special effects. Not unless you are you understand and you learn how to do it. What you does it take to understand and to learn and to know this? That one first you have to have a passion, mm -hmm. and uh, next you have to be creative and have uh, interest in it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So do you go to school to learn about that, or you just have interest and that's it? For me, I learned uh, special effects uh, through YouTube. Mm -hmm. I went to YouTube. I searched for for the how to do special effects mm -hmm. in different like to do a fake wood, uh, deep cut, mm -hmm. so all that I learned from uh, YouTube. Mm -hmm. yeah. well, so what are the key differences and what are the key similarities between special effects and makeup and the normal makeup? The normal makeup, uh, I can say, they are both, they are both like uh, relating in a way, because mm -hmm. you have to have uh, the uh, final product, like the final image on your head before right. you start doing it mm -hmm. for both of them. But uh, the difference is the special effects, you have to be more creative than the normal mm -hmm. makeup. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So which one is simpler? It means if this is, uh, b because you love it, and you know sometimes mm -hmm. one would say, for the love, this, is, uh, this becomes then simple. But do you suppose it is simpler than the normal makeup? And do you yourself know how to do the normal makeup? Yes, I know how to do so normal So you have to, to pass that process where you have to do the normal makeup first to proceed to... Uh, special effects? No, no, it's it's the uh, normal makeup. It's different from uh, special mm -hmm. effects makeup because mm -hmm. that one, uh, the special effects have to be. There's products for special effects right. and there's products for uh, the normal makeup. Mm -hmm. So there's a way you can be good at special so effects and not good at all. Totally on normal different. Makeup. Okay. Totally different. Uh -huh. You can be good in special effects makeup and also be good on uh, normal makeup. Mm -hmm. Yeah. How is the uh, the market like? in the country like is there a market for special effect makeup artists the market is uh, very down because of the restriction of the kfc right. Kenya film, film commission Bordia. yes commission, but yeah. uh we are going there we are we are heading there because mm -hmm. now we we have so many creatives uh in the country mm -hmm. and i think in future we'll be at the top well, what informs these regulations and restrictions do you, what do you think would be informing this because I would want to believe this is creation of employment. This is expect. This should be the interest of KFC because it's in the artistic world. Why is it that they have so much restrictions? And what are some of these restrictions that we're talking about? That that's uh, I've been wondering because we have been uh, uh, in a negotiation with mm -hmm. them because they will they don't allow the let's say foreign foreign for, foreign. Mm -hmm. uh, film makers to mm. come and shoot in the country yeah. just they have to pass through your work and see what you are going to shoot right. so if there is some uh, images even the tax is very high to shoot here in Kenya mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. 
that one it's limiting us mm -hmm. in, uh, is a polite way a polite way of saying that you really you know put this into practice in the country yes but but we are pushing mm -hmm. yeah we are pushing and in future i think we'll be we'll overcome all this how soon are you expecting this to be uh next year oh yeah yeah probably next year take us through your experiences of, uh, with it or we do you know doing makeup uh, that is special effect makeup so far i made all the struggles that are there uh you know for the makeup uh special effects makeup mm -hmm. when i went to school to learn uh, special uh, to learn the normal makeup so i got that interest i went to the to the google and searched all the types of makeup mm -hmm. so i got the there is special effects makeup for film so i i i decided to just give it a try mm -hmm. so i just did a small cut on my chain okay then i posted it on my facebook mm -hmm. it was just an hobby so uh within 15 minutes of getting calls from my friends right. telling me what has happened what what you can go far if this is special so i told them this is a special effect makeup mm -hmm. so they told me you know you can go very far by mm -hmm. doing special effects makeup so from that i developed uh, an interest of doing more so i did more research and i did more creative uh, special effects mm -hmm. yeah. so what are some of the projects that you have worked on if any at all uh like for now let's say i've worked in so many uh, projects mm -hmm. even beginning of this year i did uh, some special effects makeup for a hollywood uh, film nice. shoots right. in italy okay. yeah thank you to the producer Mugi. Mm -hmm. it's, a Mugi. it's a hollywood producer okay and uh, i also did there are some others i did but they have not come out yet mm -hmm. but i'll speak more of them when they come out mm -hmm. yeah all right um are you able, like randomly, if I tell you now that I, I need this, I mean, are you able to achieve any kind of demand that is requested of you or is presented? Yes, right now I can create any any type of uh, special effect makeup. Mm -hmm. Even if you want to, let's say zombies, uh, and that one you've been seeing in uh, Walking Dead, mm -hmm. this one I'm able to create. I can create fresh woods, I can create uh, Alza wood. Mm -hmm. Everything I can create mm -hmm. now. Yeah. How long have you been doing this? Ah, oh, three years now. Three years. Yes. And you are that good. I thank God. Do you intend to expound it even further by probably going to school? Oh uh, no, I think I'm still. Oh, better you just tell us the difference. I mean, yeah. is because people have to pay so much. Yes. To sure. be able to learn some of these things. I mean, what has been your experience learning from YouTube? And do you suppose then there's probably no point of someone proceeding to pay so much to get to learn this? Uh, I think there are some uh, s there are some things you can't skill you can't learn from YouTube because mm -hmm. you will see them on YouTube then right. you try them then they fail they backfire it's just the, like mm -hmm. the normal makeup when you see it then you try to do it then it, it gives you different totally different image mm -hmm. but um, I think it's good to go uh, to go to school to learn and also use YouTube YouTube you can use it because me I used to YouTube and now you can see I've show, I did I have did some shoots with Hollywood mm -hmm. producers. Mm -hmm. yeah, so I think all depends in let's say in your interest, the interest you have mm -hmm. in uh, in passion you have in mm -hmm. creating those images. All right. Let's talk about the products. And um, sometimes even for me, yeah. it's hard to get um, makeup products, genuine ones, legit mm -hmm. ones, yeah. in the market. Do we have more of a special effects makeup product in the country? And if not so, how do you get to access them? For special effects uh, products, we have been uh, struggling to get them because mm -hmm. you can't get them locally. Not unless you buy from another special effects makeup artist. Mm -hmm. But we have been, uh, like for me, I've been importing them from UK and US. Mm -hmm which is also a challenge because it takes like uh, from amazon it gives it takes like one week to two weeks right for them to arrive in the country mm -hmm. so you can't get the special effects makeup uh, products in mm -hmm. the country do you have basic ones are there basic ones on special effects that you say okay on this one you have to find you have to have it yes like uh, uh you for special effects products you have to have latex latex it's uh, used to you can't do any special effects with mm -hmm. latex mm -hmm. and also the fake blood there is there is yeah, different yeah. Uh, types of blood there is fresh there is like uh, 
uh, one way food mm -hmm. yeah so they are very 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 different mm -hmm. yeah all so. right if you're using it on someone um mm. there are cases of reactions with makeup normally yes. you know there are very many of them how do you ensure that this does not react with the person that you are using it on or would we say that the makeup are well orchestrated to ensure that at least you know they are safe for use any skin type any person and all that yes that's why you have to go and learn uh, about skin care mm -hmm. to understand those products to understand what you are supposed to use in this skin because we have different types of skin mm -hmm. and uh, we some people have allergies some people have uh, acne mm -hmm. so you have to learn mm -hmm. uh, on how to use those products so uh, those products you have to, that's why you have to learn about skin care mm -hmm. so that you can understand more about uh, when you're doing special effects on what to use on that person mm -hmm. yeah locally has um, any film industry of any film uh, you know team approached you to work with them Locally, yes, uh, I've been approached by so many producers mm -hmm. here in Kenya, and we have sh did some pro uh, projects together, but they are not yet out. out, out like you yeah, said, but yeah. I'm hoping soon mm -hmm. they'll be out and show people mm -hmm. what we did. And now that you've had the chance to work from, you know, like with people from different areas, uh, one would be eagerly waiting to know or want to, would want to understand what difference is there you know when it comes to such effects locally and how we embrace this on how much we incorporate this in our scripts in comparison mm -hmm. to what is experienced and of course hollywood like you have rightfully put it like you have said and uh, moving forward what could be the key challenges that we are talking about lately like you rightfully put it we have KFC being a, a challenge and I don't know how much lobbying has been done towards ensuring that that is addressed so I mean key would be is there a huge difference like you said the film industry Hollywood Nollywood Bollywood is a whole different from Riverwood uh, which is most common right here in the country so what is the notable difference that you've seen while working with the Hollywood um, uh, guys and also working with uh, local guys the local guys I can say what I've noticed, because I've watched so many uh, pro projects which have been done by the local makeup artists, mm -hmm. and I've also watched the like uh, um, that one for Nigerians, it's mm -hmm, mm -hmm. <laughs> and also for Indians. But let's say we are so much far from the from the makeup artists from Hollywood. Mm -hmm. Yes, but far in what sense? Like we are way ahead of them, or they are way ahead of us? They are ahead of us. Okay. For, for now, but mm -hmm. not ahead of me. Oh. Uh, yeah. All right, that's what well. That's why they picked you to work with them. Because yeah, I've been seeing people creating those special effects mm -hmm. from, let's say, from Africa. They make a artist from Africa, but you see there is, uh, you can notice this as special effects. It's fake, like mm -hmm. it's fake from. Mm -hmm. So I think. Uh, there is much difference, and that's why I want to I want to to train people mm -hmm. on how to create the real the real image yeah. of uh, what you're required to create. Like uh, if it's a uh, wood, how to create it? If it's fresh wood, I want to uh, train more young people mm -hmm. so that they can understand and reach that level mm -hmm. of uh, Hollywood. But I'm not targeting the Hollywood. I'm targeting to be ahead of Hollywood. Oh, nice. So, okay, so what will, I will it take Africa. for us to get there? First, it's courage mm -hmm. and vision and dream. Because okay. if you just dream about it, that's all. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the energy you have inside you, it will take you to mm -hmm. that what you're aspiring to be. All right, your yeah. worst and your best experience in the industry. My worst uh, experience in the industry, I was approached by one of the producers mm -hmm. and he told me we are, they have the uh, products for special effects. Mm -hmm. So they told me what I'm required to create on set. Uh, so I left my products at home. Mm -hmm. So I went to that set. So when I reached there, they gave me their kids. Right. Surprisingly, I got the products I got there. <laughs> Well, they were just good. totally fake. All right. Fake, cause uh, like for blood, I think I got uh, 
It's called what? Food colors okay. with some water. So you have to mix. <laughs> you have to mix that too. You have to mix. Then I got uh, deadlocks wax because mm -hmm. we have the molding wax. Yes. Which can, when, when you stick, it can stay for like even 24 hours. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. We have latex which you stick, not unless you pull it, it cannot come mm -hmm, out. Mm -hmm. So I created, they wanted to, me to create some cuts on the stomach of mm -hmm. uh, one of the cast. So I created, then you was required to run. Mm -hmm. So when you try to run, everything went down. Oops, it melted you down. See? Yeah, yeah, okay. That uh -huh. time we were away from, I was away from home. We were okay. shooting away from Nairobi. Right. So it was like, what? You create again? Down. Down it goes. So so pissed off. Right. Then they were told me, no, you have to be creative. Was it, oh, so it was being blamed on you. Yeah, you have to be creative. <laughs> we have been using this product, so you have to be creative, mix these products. And so I was like, oh, guys. This is not it. But eventually that, that it worked. That day was the worst day in my life. I well, that's say. what they say. <laughs> By the time you see a film on TV, yes. you do not even know yes. how much work has been put towards gathering that. Sure. Your best experience? Best experience mm -hmm. is... Uh, this time I was approached by one of the producers in Hollywood. Mm -hmm. It's called Nicky Wabugu. He's right. a very good friend of mine. He's mm -hmm. a Kenyan, but he's working in Hollywood. So he told me, you know what, we, I want to work with you. Uh, and he came, we met. I was... Yay! Excited. So excited. Yeah, so that's good. Yeah, mm -hmm. so that's, that, that one, it's, I think it's uh, the best experience I got. Because... Mm -hmm. Uh, being approached by Hollywood, pro uh, Hollywood producer, it's not a... Uh, it's not a small thing, I agree. How, how, how do you position yourself in the market? And I mean, how do you get to market yourself to the people? I market myself through social media. Mm -hmm. Yes, mm -hmm. like Instagram, Facebook, WhatsApp. Yeah, and also I try to push and sponsor mm -hmm. my... The, pro the, the, the Portfolios. Right. I do more portfolios. Mm -hmm. I also do collaborations. I collaborate with photographers, videographers, and filmmakers. Mm -hmm. At least we create something, then we put it online mm. so that people can see. And uh, so we get our job from uh, marketing ourselves on social media. Mm -hmm. yeah. Has there been a situation where you have had to, you know, at least, okay, well, say, let's talk about. A person you've worked with, or maybe a, a, a producer, a director that you've worked with, and they've denied you uh, the, the, the freedom or to go ahead and get pictures that you incorporate in your portfolio. I mean, they've said probably this is, is, is private, this one cannot be rolled out. And especially when we know about film, sometimes you're not allowed to dish out some of this uh, content before the film airs officially or lo is launched officially. Are there times you've experienced such situations? Yes, I've experienced uh, such situations and how do you in so handle many that? different uh, states, different yeah. shoots. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so even you are not allowed to carry your phone. Yeah. You have to keep oh, it yeah. away from. Uh -huh. You are not allowed to take pictures. Uh, so you are told, you know, you, you know what, you'll get credit. Mm -hmm. But nobody is allowed to take pictures. But for that, because uh, it's work, mm -hmm. you just take it the way it is. Mm -hmm. And you try to create your best so that you can get work afterwards. All right. Yeah. You okay. just take it easy. So you, you, you have to maintain high discipline. Mm. Yes. High sure, discipline. Sure, sure. So where do you see yourself in years? To, before you answer that, I'd want to know. Removing the makeup. Because sometimes there's a whole lot of stuff put on someone's face. <laughs> eh? yes, yes. And you know, once you've done that as the makeup artist, boom, you've disappeared. Yes. You're leaving this other person to figure out how best they can handle this. So skin care is key, like you've said. Yes. Before you start applying this stuff on someone's body do you advise them on what to do next once they put this yeah for them uh, we have uh, makeup removers mm -hmm. so I try to educate them when I'm doing makeup uh, on your face mm -hmm. so I have to advise you of, on uh, what will use after your day uh, it's, uh, it's done yeah it's after done. the production so yes. I have to I have to advise you if it's a special effect I have to stay there because mm -hmm. you can't just pull it down because it will it's, you can pull it down, then it comes out with, with your, your, skin. your skin. So I have to stay there and mm -hmm. use, uh, we have uh, the makeup removers right. for special effects. Mm -hmm. So uh, I, I'm the one who is supposed to remove it from mm -hmm. your skin. Mm -hmm. yeah. Have you ever dealt with a case of a reaction? Someone comes to you and tells you that, you know what, the product you, you used on me has reacted. And have you had products that have reacted on you yourself? I have not experienced 
uh, the reactions on my clients mm -hmm. and also on me. Mm -hmm. So, what if it happens? Because it's it's it's, it's possible that it could happen. It could happen, but uh, you see, you, you have to be careful mm -hmm. for it not to happen. Because mm -hmm. when it happens, then it means you are work it. You lose more clients. Mm -hmm. But so, sometimes it doesn't happen because you plan for that. It's just that you know people have sensitive types of skins, yes. different types of skins. So it could react with you and not react with somebody else. So when it uh, reacts to a person, I have to I have to give them. Uh, advice mm -hmm. on how to the products they can use to clear the the, the affected areas right yes okay yeah. uh where do you see yourself in five years what are your future plans what are your future goals i know you've told us one that you'd want to train as many youths as possible in uh, to this in five years i see myself as a, an international makeup artist mm -hmm. for special effects and also for beauty makeup through that, you know, now I'm training uh, young people, yeah. and uh, we have started shows like Halloween shows. Okay. Yes, every year there is an Halloween show. Mm -hmm. So uh, I'm planning to to learn more and to train more people. So in five years' time to come, mm -hmm. I I'm seeing myself as an international makeup artist, mm -hmm. uh, traveling all, all over right. the world, okay. creating like uh, special effects like you have never seen mm -hmm. yes i'm seeing myself this day i will i see myself uh in five years to come i see let, let's say i'll be the top makeup artist in the world in oh, the all world. the best all the best to, to that and uh what are you doing towards that i mean what more are you doing to uh, to add on to the skills that you have to make the best of the skills that you have because you realize that even for us, the kind of makeup that I apply today is not the kind that I did a year ago, two years behind. Like, it keeps evolving. So what are you doing to match up and to keep up with the... What I'm doing, it's uh, like every week I have to create a new, uh, a new look on uh, mm -hmm. special effects. So I keep on learning every day. Yeah. I keep on creating every day. I'm also... Uh, searching mm -hmm. for the new products in the market mm -hmm. and, and learn how they are used. So you have to keep yourself updated every right. day. Mm -hmm. See the products you have uh, released, the new products from those big companies mm -hmm. which they produce the uh, special effects makeup. Mm -hmm. So every day I'm creating a new look. Every week I'm creating a new look. Mm -hmm. Yes. How expensive can you go in getting your products? How expensive? There are times that you say, ah, you know, they pattern a bit <laughs> Or there are, there are people who will compromise on quality because the argument is that, oh, well, if I can still achieve something close to what I want to achieve at a lower price, why not? Like uh, last year, I imported special effects makeup uh, products worthy 300000 Okay. Yes. Or how much? How much? Okay, watch it when you even call you. Like, just, how much? <laughs> like, just like a simple box, it's like just, a simple kit? It's just a box, like, a, let's say this size from down. Right. Yeah, it's, but with the, with the everything you need mm -hmm. to create mm -hmm. a special effects makeup. Mm -hmm. Sometimes when we buy some of these things, we are calculating, uh, is it going to bring returns? How long will it take for me before I get the returns? Has it, brought, has it given you returns so far? For me, I buy, but I don't, uh, I don't, I'm not concerned more on money. Okay. But I'm concerned more on creating what, uh, what a client mm -hmm, wants. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm more concerned, I'm concerned on uh, what makes me happy. Right. So I'm just satisfi satisfying my, I want to satisfy my client to show him how happy, mm -hmm. what I can create. But money, you can't put money first. Mm -hmm. You have to put the the satisfaction first mm -hmm. before the money mm -hmm. so i imported that uh, kit 300000 mm -hmm. uh, and i did uh, just like uh, let's say three shoots mm -hmm. with the, with it right and i think by the end of this year i will be uh, you'll need to import more I'll, yeah i have to import more wow i, I want to be more equipped but mm -hmm. i don't have to keep money fast what i do it's mm -hmm. 
just to be perfect. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right, perfection is key. Yeah. But also the long-term goal would be, or the ultimate goal would be, you know, how much you can make out of this and everything. Mm -hmm. how, yes. much, how many years do you give yourself? It's okay, you went to say that in five years you're going to be amongst the best. But how many more years do you give yourself to that point whereby you'll be saying, you know what, you call me for this shoot, it is below what I take, and I'm not going to take it. Even now, you can call oh, me for a shoot. Oh, you cannot sell low? <laughs> Okay, <laughs> how, how then are you saying that money is not a factor? Mm -hmm. Even now, because you see, it has taken me uh, three years in the industry. Yeah. I've learned a lot. Uh, 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 people have seen my work. So even now, mm -hmm. you can't just call me and uh, give me a small budget. You mm -hmm. have to pay me well. Mm -hmm. Yes. All right. So even now, mm -hmm. yeah, the producers know that. The directors and filmmakers, they know that. Right. How, yeah. are you, how are you placing yourself strategic within the market? I know you've said that sometimes you market yourself, you know, online and everything. That could be for the international scene. But within the market, how are you aligning yourselves with the key producers, with the key directors, with the key people in the film industry, in the, in, in the country? What I do first, uh, if you are shooting a film, yeah. let's say you're a producer, we have to uh, have a meeting together mm -hmm. you tell me what I, what is expecting of me mm -hmm. then when you tell me what is expected of me what i'm supposed to create how many days so now i give you my price like every day you have how, how many days i'll be on set mm -hmm. so now from that i can tell you every day you have to pay me this mm -hmm. every day mm -hmm. so uh then it depends on let's say it's a local production mm -hmm. local production it's it differs with the 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 uh, let's say uh from hollywood and other producers from outside mm -hmm. yeah so it depends with mm -hmm. the what you are shooting mm -hmm. and uh the coverage the like uh how many people you are targeting to tag yeah. right. so yeah. okay that's incredible as we wind up on this probably you'd give us your parting shots to you know very many youths are out here all sitting lazy, not focused on making the best of themselves. But look at you. You have gone to YouTube and you have got that an art. Free of charge. Okay, well, not free of charge because then again, you have to load bundles and everything and all that. But, you know, I mean, what would be your advice to the young youngsters out there? Uh, what I can advise them, it's uh, for me, mm -hmm. let's say start from, I was born in a village where I don't think even now it's in the... In the Google anyway, map. The Google map <laughs> in, uh, yeah, so I was born there. Uh -huh. Went to school without shoes. You see, so I did not see myself like uh, being approached by uh, people. I don't see myself even the TV to right, see me to see the TV. Mm -hmm. So what I did, it's I just sat down one day and I was like, uh, what can I do to reach there? Mm -hmm. What when I started makeup, I, I did not start makeup to be employed mm -hmm. by anybody. Mm -hmm. I started it to be an, a, a CEO. Right. I started, I said, let me go learn makeup so that I can employ myself. Nice. And interact with so many producers. And because uh, I did makeup, I was focusing on, uh, was focusing on uh, film production. Mm -hmm. So what I can tell young people, it's just dream about it. Mm -hmm. Try to dream. Right. Then take that, the energy you have, the little energy you have, mm -hmm. then go for it. All right, it's amazing. Simple. You can go anywhere. You can reach anywhere you want in this world. Indeed. Mm -hmm. Congratulations, Jeffrey Ndunga. And, of course, all the best as you pursue this uh, special makeup artist. That's an incredible story, and we wish you nothing but the best. Thank you so much for gracing our set this morning. And it's also time that I update you on what is happening on our roads and Yes, let's cross over to the other side and uh, take a look at what is happening. The road's not so bad. I can only notice that Mombasa Road, well, as always, is the only uh, place that, uh, you know, in few sections that we have uh, some bit of traffic. And here we are in Nairobi. Uh -huh. Let's kick off with, uh, as you can see, the green, as always, will tell you that it's not so bad. And also the yellow is not as bad. Red is a little bit too tight in regards to the roads. And the heavy, the maroon now, is what will tell you where traffic is so bad. Here we are. Nairobi South Hospital, uh, this is a little bit, let me take it from here, yes, here we are. So we can update you when you're stepping out, you know what directions to take, what directions not to take. Nairobi West all the way, hospital, here we are, 
hospital headed to Lely Kenya Institute, Kenya Institute of Mass Communication. You can tell that there's a bit of traffic along Mombasa Road. Uh, so if you're taking that direction, be a little bit careful on these other sides of Mata Hospital, not so bad of a situation. And uh, Hebatula Road, Bandari Road, Impala Auto Spares, not so bad of uh, situation. Let's cross over to this other pick up on where traffic is heavy. That is just Mombasa Road. And coming to this side of Nyayo Stadium, some bit of, you know, snarl-ups, but not so bad. It's obvious that the roads are not so bad this morning in Nairobi. And I'll also go back to some of your feedback. As you can see, that uh, I mean, it's all clear. Uh, that is Hill Park Hotels, that is Britam Office, that should be a long uh, community. Not so bad. Uh -huh. Malimu Sako National Society. The roads are not so bad, as you can see. Mara Road, clearly not so bad. Kenyatta Terminus, Kenyatta Avenue, not so bad. And I think it's obvious that uh, this morning, I mean, courtesy of COVID-19, a majority of people are not out here in traffic. So indeed, the mornings are not so bad, so I'll not delve much into that. I think I've picked on the key ones. The reminder that if you're using Mombasa Road, you expect a snarl up, a brief snarl up on the same. And let's cross over to some of the feedback on a Math 3 route. Uh, the road users also giving us updates on what is happening. And I last used Likoni Road two months ago. Does it still have horrible potholes? Well, that is someone who's asking if you are somewhere in Likoni Road, kindly update at Shish Kebab. So at least she knows whether she should take that direction. Or the madness they did from Karyoko to Pangani is unexplainable. They just poured the mix on the road, made the road super rough with free chipping, flying dangerously. Why throw waste resources like this? And I think I have seen that. Uh, you know, one of the evenings while using that road, that is a tweet by at Dream Low Blast. And let's see, Thicker Road needed to recapiting anyway. Well, Thicker Road needed no recapiting anyway. Well, they should have redirected the funds to other roads within Nairobi in worse conditions, as they would say. John Mauta, some bit of recapiting being done in Thicker Road and probably causing some bit of a snarl up, no roundabout signage along this highway road, signage markings. White or yellow dotted road continues and cut eyes do help. Mind you, this rainy season accelerates blind spots. That is a Japheth Masanda. And I think I agree with Japheth. A majority of roads in Nairobi, you find that actually even where there is... Um, there's a bump, you know, there are no markings. If you're expected, you're expecting a turn somewhere, they're not there. So I think there needs to be some proper, you know, marking of the roads across Nairobi. I think there's not so much. Uh, the three things, one, Cabana State, the hill opposite Imara Daima, ICD entrance jam with trucks opposite Samia. After that, it moves. That's also a reminder on what is happening or in, uh, that is what uh, is happening on Mombasa Road, Thika Road, slow moving at all stops. Then again, Utali to Pango Exchange. There you go. If you're taking Thika Road, you know what to expect. And I think that's more like it. Uh, multiple accidents at Samia Business Park Town outbound causing a traffic snarl up. I hope it's not as bad. That is a tweet by at Humphrey Humes. So if you're using that direction, you know what to expect also. And cold weather today. Of course, people asking what Thicker Road is like, you've already gotten an answer as to that. I'm attached from NTVRS Sakongong operating along Gong. Of course, the numbers have been captured right there, KCK 666. I'll not go into that. A flip squad, two almost flipped and endangered the lives of passengers and road users driving dangerously. I think some of these people we need to name and shame them so that at least... We all use the road well and we ensure that it's a comfortable ride for every other person who is using the roads. And that, that's more like it. We'll be here again tomorrow morning on a Morning Cafe to give you more updates on the world of news and also what is happening on the road and so much so also on Marta's lifestyle. It was great having you this morning. My name is Linda Alela. Thank you so much for keeping us company. I will remind you to keep it TV 47 because you have so much so in store for you. Do have yourself a lovely day. See you again tomorrow. Thank you so much for your feedback. We won't be going through them because of the interest of time, but asante. Bye-bye.